That's a beautiful leaf. Pink dragon wing begonia. One of the classics, always been one of my favorite annuals to have out in the garden. I love the way they have that nice, slightly arching habit to their growth. They come up and bend ever so slightly. And of course, the beautiful pink flowers that dangle from above. And I've always been one to try and find things that fit into my zone six garden that don't really belong. Because of that, I've been a longtime fan of the hardy begonias, Begonia grandis, which typically are good into zone six. There are lots of cultivars of the grandis. I have the pink teardrops in the garden right now. They have similar characteristics to this lovely dragon wing begonia here that I've said is one of my favorites. They have a large leaf shape to them, that slight sort of a lance shape, a heart shape with a little bit of a tilt to it. But there's something that those begonias have always been missing, something very important to me, something I just really crave in the garden to make sure I have that nice lush feeling, that lush hydrated vibe. That's shine, nice glossy leaves. A few years ago, I was going through Plant Delight's website, as I do, because I love their website. They're always showing new plants with a lot of great information on them. Looking for some hardy begonias to plant in the garden. That's when I first saw begonia smooch. A plant that has everything in it that I want when I'm looking for a plant that's hardy but still gives a tropical vibe. The only problem is, is out of stock. Made sure to add my name to the list, notify me when the plant becomes available. And now here we are a couple of years later with the smooch. It was, I had to wait a long time for this one. It's possible that it had been available before and I just didn't see the email that it was in stock. As soon as I got that email saying Begonia smooch was back in stock, of course I had to hop online and make sure to order myself some Begonia smooch. And of course, you know how I do. I didn't get just the one. I grabbed six of them. Let's talk about them. Oh, and hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Very excited about these plants. Look at that glossy foliage. Beautiful plants. We'll go over the basics of the begonia smooch fairly briefly. I'll do as I normally do with things from Plant Delights and just read you what they have to say because they always have the best descriptions for their plants. Begonia smooch is an introduction from Georgia plantsman Ozzy Johnson. Begonia smooch is an outstanding hybrid of Begonia grandis, Herons pirouet, and probably Begonia kaidoensis. In our trials, Begonia smooch has excelled, forming a 16 inch tall by four foot wide clump of glossy green foliage topped from summer until frost with huge two and a quarter inch flowers dangling from long eight inch pedicles. Pedicles being the long part that comes out here that the flowers dangle out from. There are a few things that stand out to me in that description, the things that drove me to the plant other than just having beautiful glossy foliage and the gorgeous pink flowers. Hopefully I will put a picture up. Here it is again if I haven't, or here it is for the first time if I haven't, but 16 inches tall by four foot wide. That means that one of these little plants eventually, over probably I would say maybe three to five years, five foot wide clump where they're going to have that slightly arching habit and just makes for a wonderful space in the garden to have a, an underplanting of something else with those arching up above them, which is what I've planned to do with them. I really like the hardy begonias in areas that have some curve to them up against the edge of a garden bed, but a lot of the grandest types do get quite large. Some get over two feet tall, making them not the most ideal plant to have on the edge of a garden bed. I have some spots where the garden curves around up on a wall where I would love to have something that comes up just a little bit that helps emphasize that curve. But anything over two feet tall, I think would just be too much and overshadow the curvatures and take away from things. So the height and the width, perfect glossy green foliage, Love it. Vibrant pink flowers from summer until frost. Not a ton of perennials will do that for us. It's come a long way with various daylilies and some roses and hydrangeas. But typically the grandest cultivars really are a powerhouse when it comes to flowering. It's not quite the same as planting something as an annual like the dragon's wing begonia where they will be very abundant with flowers. Once you have an established clump with the grandest types, particularly the uh, pink teardrops like I have down there and the herons here away, that's a beautiful one that will hold on to its blooms and produce more. For me, usually from July all the way until frost. Depending on where you live, you may get a longer blooming season out of them if they start earlier for you. The hardy begonias don't usually even emerge for me until about early May. 
here in zone 6A, 6A, 6B. I'm in St. Louis, like kind of right on the line. So essentially, this is a begonia that's giving me what I love about the annual type. Big, glossy foliage that has that nice semi heart shape to it a good enough size that it's not going to disappear into the garden but it's also not going to get so big that it overshadows other things in the garden and reliable flowering which the pollinators will enjoy and it will just look nice for a very 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 long time during the growing season i can't speak too much as to growing this one specifically since obviously i just now gotten them haven't even planted them yet some things that stand out to me just looking at them in their containers in comparison to some other begonias is that these feel very, very sturdy. You can look down inside the container of this one and see the growths that are down in here. This is, these are solid, seemingly very solid. Some begonias, you know, you barely touch them and they just snap and pop, but these, that hasn't been the case. I've been moving them around, trying to sort of experiment with the sun for them because the place where I wanted to put them used to get shade afternoon shade but now it's getting pretty intense sun up here on the hills the neighbors cut some trees down so now it's not getting the light conditions that i would like for it but obviously i ordered them anyways because i figured well i'll find a spot for them maybe not right where i wanted them but wherever they go they will be beautiful they do have some foliar burn that's not because of anything plant delights did that's because it got up to 95 degrees one day and they just fried had them in the shade but that was just a lot of heat when it's been consistently in the 70s and low 80s i think it was just shocking for the plants but overall really not too bad as far as foliar burn it's not great I mean, nobody, you don't want crunchy leaves on the plants right but considering how hot it got for a few days and how dry it is we're in a drought right now i think they're looking pretty good they're ready to go into the ground now i've just been waiting to get some irrigation up and running which just now finished so that's what i will be doing hopefully this weekend in this weekend's vlog but i thought i'd share these with you it's nice to be able to show some plants that aren't i'm okay i wish well i wish they were like in flower but that's just not how it works it's a perennial it's going to take some time but if you watch the videos and everything then as they grow and as they flower of course i'll keep everybody updated and that will be in the garden tours as well even though these are likely a cross between the grandis of some sort they said probably the herons peer away and the kaidoensis I'm going to treat them pretty much how I would a grandis where I'm going to be sticking them in a position where they will get really bright but filtered morning light. They can get some direct sun in the morning, but not for more than probably three or four hours, just because it does in the summer get very hot here and it's really dry, drier than I'm used to. I guess that's not all that useful. Triple digits. Fahrenheit, not unusual, upper 90s, pretty common in July around here. So the hotter it gets, the more shade in the afternoon that I like to make sure these sorts of plants have. Organically rich, well-drained soil, fairly typical begonia things there. The grandest that I have grown in the past have done really well underneath trees where they're in fairly dry shade. But I did, of course, have to stay on top of making sure that they were watered in very well for the first couple of years. That's just the nature of perennials right get them rooted take really good care of them once they're established usually you can step things back and just let them do their thing i love hardy begonias all the different types of them i always get excited when i can try a new one and i have been waiting for these for such a long time i'm so happy to have a whole bunch of them to put into the garden where they will form nice big patches of really beautiful tropical lush foliage and if tropical is not your thing these would be great in any garden cottage garden you name it because they have that really nice somewhat ethereal texture to them i would say you have nice long stems holding up those really shiny leaves with the danglies that you get and even more so when they're in flower so if you have some areas where you have some part sun and light shade give it a try they are absolutely beautiful even when not in bloom it really come on you know what's right in front of you, autofocus. The leaves are nice and stiff. They have an interesting texture to them. Some bumpy, almost trichome stuff going on there. Look at that, like, come on. Isn't that just beautiful foliage for a perennial? It doesn't look like something you would typically see where I live, and that's what I like so that when I'm at my house in my garden, I feel like I'm off somewhere else on vacation. That's a pretty easy thing to get with hardy begonias. Comment down below. Do you have favorite varieties of hardy begonias? There are some really cool ones out there. Oh, just in time, the machinery, the construction equipment just fired up as I'm saying goodbye. It might be a noisy outro. 
sorry. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciate it. If you've ever grown this one before, this is just a spotlight. Can't tell you much as far as personal experience from growing it. That's why I just read you what Plants Delight said because they're the experts on this one. Not me, I'm just, I'm just a fan. I'm just a groupie. I'm just here for a good time with them. And again, I will keep everybody posted in the garden tours and I should be planting these up in this weekend's vlog the video after this one, I think. It's been a chaotic week for that vlog, but I, I, hopefully you'll get to it. All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.